Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Black Knights Weekly. I'm Nick DeSanctis, bringing you along for a closer look inside athletics at West Point. Today we'll learn the X's and O's behind a corner kick, take a look inside last Saturday's homecoming football game, and meet an Army athlete who's taken up a second sport. If you thought mixing golf and hockey was reserved for Adam Sandler in movies, meet Army's Joe Kozlak. The sophomore forward recently competed with the golf team as part of the Army-Navy meet. He talks about it as well as why he chose to come to West Point in this week's Cadet Spotlight. Uh, well, I started playing golf this year, obviously, with the golf team. Uh, came here as a good golfer in high school, and one of the, the grad assistants for the golf team is John Bob, who was on the hockey team last year. And he uh, told the golf coach that I was a pretty good golfer. So Coach Watts called Coach Riley and was like, hey, we hear uh, uh, Joe Kozlak's a pretty good golfer. Can we have him come try out and see if he can play on the team? Coach Riley comes up to me in the weight room and goes, hey, Cozy, uh, golf coach wants to know if you want to play golf. I was like, what? I was like, yeah, I mean, I'd love to. So I went out there one day and I played. And, coach was like yeah I think we got some talent we can work with you and get you in the Army Navy meet and so from then on I just did all hockey uh, with the team and then after that every day I go up to the golf course John Bob or Ryan Leitz would bring me over to the golf course at about six o'clock and I'd practice until about eight when it got dark and just uh, happened to get good enough to play in the meet and they, uh, there's one course in Minnesota that hosts uh, major championships and they're going to host the Ryder Cup in 2016. So it, it is big in the three or so months that we get to play golf. Uh, it, was, it was special for me personally and I think it was special for the guys on the hockey team because it's all that school is about is everybody saying beat Navy all the time. Well, we're like, well, you know, we really don't care about Navy because all we have is Air Force, so we say beat Air Force. And so it's kind of cool uh, for me to be able to partake in that and this big tradition and rivalry with the Navy. It was a dream come true for me because in high school I was being recruited to play golf and, you know, I, I gave it up for a chance to play hockey. And so I never thought I'd get a chance to play college golf and I wanted to know something happens and it, it was exciting. Well, I was recruited to play hockey here. Um, my brother went to the Air Force Academy and played hockey there, so that's really how I got interested. Um, I never really knew much about either place before my brother went to Air Force, and then I was re being recruited by both places, and you know, I wanted to kind of follow my brother's footsteps, but wanted to be better than him as well, so I chose to come here. Hi, I'm Joe Kozlak, a sophomore forward on the hockey team. The pressure that the Army women's soccer team puts on its opponents generates a great deal of scoring opportunities and also a great deal of corner kicks. Army assistant coach Lorraine Quinn draws one up for us in this week's Army X's and O's. Hi, I'm Lorraine Quinn, the assistant coach of the women's soccer team at West Point. Today I'm going to show you an attacking corner setup. Um, so as you can see, just to start off, we have a blue and a red. The blue will be the defensive team, red will be the offensive team. So I'm going to go ahead and set up, we're going to speak specifically about the attack, attacking side of it. So I'm going to set up a defensive side just to give you an idea. So the defensive side will be in blue. I'll make those the X's. So just one way that you may defend a corner kick coming from this side if the ball is over here. You might put somebody at about the 10 yard mark to front the ball. So that would be the first X. A lot of times you see players on the post. So we'll play so we'll have a player defender go near post, a defender go far post, and then we'll set it up as if they're, they're in a zone formation. So if you have your three players there, you may put another player to zone at the front of the six, and then three players, oh, there we go, across the six yard line right there and then typically you're fronting the ball two on the post one at the front of the six three along the six yard line and then two players back post about the 12 yard line so that's just a defensive setup formation and now we'll talk the attacking side so again as i said before the attacking side we're going to go in red 
So you obviously have one player out here because you'll have one player serving the ball. A lot of times you will see teams set up on the keeper. So make sure you're not going to foul them. No body contact It's really just to kind of obstruct the vision and maybe their chance to come out because there will be a body in the way. So you'll have a player on the near post or on the keeper right there that can look for the flick and to obstruct things. They could also come out if something is short there. Then we'll set up where we have three players out here for the runs, the attacking runs that are going to be into the six. So if we have one player out here, we can have a near, far, and slot run. So you want to make sure your runs aren't too straight because it becomes hard to attack the ball like that and easy for defenders to pick you up. So if you have a near post run, it's going to be somebody coming in here and really approaching the near post as that ball is traveling there. So it would be somebody to flick it in right at that near post and if it goes over them, they can go ahead and frame the goal at that point. So this player will make the near post run. They'll kind of come out to round it out here so that, that they can attack the ball and be in that position right there as the ball's traveling there. So that's going to be a very nicely timed run. And then we took a talk about that slot run. So this is the near run we just talked about. The next run would be the slot. So they're going to wind up coming into where these players are zoning, trying to bypass those players about to this space here in front of the goal. So they have the goal in front of them and then they can have options to redirect the ball to the near or far post. So this player will make the slot run. Again, they'll round it out. They could readjust their run, which is very important for these players as they're going in. So they can round this out and end up a little coming in a little bit later inside the six, and we call that the slot run right there. And they have the ability to redirect the ball to the near or far side, depending on what decision the keeper is making there. And then we have a far post runner. And again, they can round that run out, and they'll be coming to about that far post in the middle of the six right there attacking the ball as a far post. Uh, we'll have one other player out here for a runner and we can have them being another far post player but not in as deep. So this is something players will have to communicate, staff will have to communicate beforehand so that the, the players know where they're making those runs and they're not going into the same space. So you have this player out here and we'll have them going at the back of the six right about here for a ball that might be over hit or even if it goes further then they can scrap up any ball that comes out to this space. We also have one player, we call that the D, we'll have somebody on the top of the D and what this player can do, they can adjust the run, be a look for maybe a short ball, but really once a ball gets served into this area, they can scrap anything up. So any balls that pop out, then they have the net and they can put something back on frame very easily. So you'll have this player right there. You have two players typically back to defend. Typically if they leave one player up here to attack for a counterattack, say that you want to try to have a man up there and then you have your goalkeeper here. In this instance, we're going to say that they have one player forward. Two, so we'll leave two players defending. That gives, gives us the ability to have one extra attacker. So we can decide what we want to do with them. We may start somebody at the top of the D there. So leave one player to scrap and maybe one player can come out for a short, give a short option to draw a defender out. At that point, they can either, our, our player taking the service here can make a decision whether to play that player that's checking in so that we can pull a defender out and then serve a ball into our runners that we have going near far slot and to the back of the six there or this player can make that run recognize that they may not get that service or that pass right there so then they can make that run and redirect come out here in case anything here gets popped out or deflected that way so that will be a setup for an attacking corner there it really depends. There's a bunch of different options that you can do to set this up attacking-wise and defensive-wise. I'm Lorraine Quinn, and that's how you take an attacking corner kick. Last Saturday, the Army football team ran past Eastern Michigan at Mikey Stadium 15-25 to as part of homecoming. Here's an inside look at the contest, Army's third win of the year. Last weekend was homecoming weekend at West Point. Reunion classes from 1993, 1998, 2003, and 2008 returned along with 36,000 other fans and other graduates to pack Mikey Stadium on Saturday to watch their Black Knights take on Eastern Michigan.
picturesque day at the United States Military Academy as fans took in not only the game, but Army's offensive explosion. Trailing 8-0 in the first quarter, the Black Knights gave the ball to Terry Baggett, who scored on a four-yard touchdown run, but this was just the beginning. Baggett went on a tear in the contest to break the single game rushing record at Army, racking up a total of 304 yards. To the goal line goes Terry Baggett. That's his first career touchdown here at Mikey Stadium. With Army trailing a minute and 20 seconds later, Baggett took the ball and he did it again. Touchdown left the Black Knights down by two, so Coach Ellerson kept the offense on the field to go for the two-point conversion. Go. No, go. Two Black Knights scored the first touchdowns of their career. Here's Trenton Turrentine in the second. Pitch left, this is Turrentine. Race to the corner, spins at the one, goes in for the touchdown. Trenton Turrentine hit at the one yard line, able to spin ahead into the end zone. On Army's first possession of the third quarter, the Black Knights struck again, this time from 34 yards out. And guess who? Terry Baggett. Inside the 30, and Terry Baggett is gone. Baggett, his third touchdown of the ball game, an enormous haul up the middle on the quick hitter run. Baggett from 34 yards out, and the Black Knights back on the scoreboard with 11-08 remaining in this third quarter. It's 28-18, Black Knights. <laughs> Just over two minutes later, he did it again. For the fourth time in the contest, Terry Baggett found the end zone. This one from distance, covering 96 yards. And again, off to the races. Terry Baggett into ENU territory. They won't catch it. Terry Baggett, his fourth touchdown run of the game, a 96-yard touchdown for the Black Knights running back. And Army has broken this one open. The will and determination of this Army offense, they refused to stop, as showcased by Larry Dixon's 30-yard touchdown run. cap things off offensively for the Black Knights, it was Matt Giacinta who rumbled ahead for four yards in his first career touchdown. Watching out, he's in. Touchdown, Army. Matt Giacinta, his first career touchdown. The Army defense pulled its weight on Saturday, coming up with a forced fumble and a fumble recovery, an interception, two sacks, and two big fourth down stops. tone of the press conference was very light and upbeat. Army celebrating its third win of the season. That Terry had? <laughs> well, I don't know. Terry, he got all those, you know, he got a third of those yards on one play. I mean, I, you know, I, uh, no, I mean, if that's a, I mean, come on. I mean, no, no, he's obviously, he's a, well, the beautiful thing about Terry is Terry, Terry can finish those runs. That's, that's the neat thing that you see there is, is, uh, uh, you know, it's a, it's, you know, we're not we're not two or three or four yards in a cloud of dust. If 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 we hit it, he can finish it. And and, and Larry's getting better at that. And and Trenton had one of his best games with the ball, which of course speaks to Larry doesn't have that kind of a game, and Trenton doesn't have that kind of a game, and 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 Larry doesn't or uh, 
uh, Baggett doesn't have that kind of a game if those other backs aren't blocking. You, everybody gives, you know, the offensive line's out there battling and they're doing great stuff. But what are the, the job our backs do without the football and our wide receivers do without the football is really, is really the key to that, uh, that production. For running backs specifically, it was all about pr practice this week was a big focus on blocking. And the last two weeks it really has been because uh, we knew that we could be better blockers than we were in the previous few games. So, I mean, that was the focus, and we came out here and executed that. And that's, that's what made blocking really, really easy for us today. Um, I think it's a very big win for us, especially on the defensive side after coming out last week and you know, getting ran over and then come out this week. We knew we needed to win this game to start it off right, and we know as an offense and defense, if we play like that every game, we're going to have a pretty good season. Army's 50-25 to victory over Eastern Michigan improves the record to 3-4. and four. They'll take on Temple at Lincoln Financial Field coming up on Saturday. Last of the day, we hand the microphone off to the cross-country team for 15 seconds with Army Athletics. Hi, I'm Dana Klein, and I'm a cow on the cross-country team. Hi, and I'm Tom Gerardo, and I'm a yearling on the cross-country team. Come down on Friday to the golf course at 4 o'clock. And watch us beat Navy. Go Army. Beat Navy. Thanks so much for joining us on this week's edition of Black Knights Weekly. Remember to like and follow the Black Knights on Facebook and Twitter. And for the latest news and updates, visit GoArmySports.com. Until next time, for Night Vision, I'm Nick DeSanctis. Go Army. Go Army.